thank you very much, and uh, good morning to everyone. And uh, thank you to Ari Kishan for the invitation, and congratulations for the rapid growth uh, uh, of the of the Broncos. Uh, uh, I was uh, at the first edition uh, in uh, maybe 2019, and uh, we were very few people. Now we are thousands. Uh, I will speak about uh, training and competence. I begin with the uh, definition of the uh, ATS and the ARS uh, that declare that uh, um, training uh, that interventional pulmonology uh, required a, a standard pulmonary medicine training program uh, after uh, the specialization. Uh, and uh, this is uh, more true uh, now that there are so many uh, new procedures and uh, every, every year we have uh, a, a new tools and new instruments uh, to, uh, to teach and to, and to learn. And uh, the solution uh, proposed uh, by uh, the Americans, by uh, Carla Lamb, uh, was a dedicated year of uh, additional fellowship training. Uh, but uh, uh, we, we know that the uh, mastery of these skills sets an ongoing practice uh, uh, in uh, uh, practice. <clears throat> uh, how uh, to teach, uh, to teach uh, interventional pulmonology? Uh, the most popular uh, model is the, <coughs> the uh, practice model with uh, we're the free learning, uh, uh, with the personal employment uh, time, and uh, uh, in the center of excellence, uh, uh, without uh, a uh, certification at the end and uh, without a structured program. Uh, the other way is the, uh, the fellowship or uh, some structured uh, learning with a dedicated time, uh, with a precise curriculum and with uh, mentors dedicated to interventional pulmonology. Uh, the solution the, uh, of the um, uh, American Association uh, was uh, uh, published in, the, in this uh, uh, publication of a, of a chest uh, with uh, some suggestion, recommendation, uh, how to organize uh, a one-year uh, fellow. And I recommend you uh, to use this uh, uh, um, document that inspired also us in Italy, in Europe, uh, to organize our courses. And in America, uh, from uh, 2009 to now, uh, we have uh, uh, more or less 40 I annual uh, IP, IP fellowship. fellowship. Uh, another way of uh, certification is uh, not the fellowship, but uh, free learning, as I uh, uh, told before with a final certification for knowledges, with the knowledge assessment test, and the procedural skills assessment test proposed by the Society of Advanced Bronchoscopy. In the same year of the publication of Carla Lamb, we began with our fellowship, or master, in interventional pulmonology. And uh, after the first editions, we realized that uh, we had no a, uh, standardized uh, curriculum, standardized uh, program. So we organized a, a, a group of, uh, of the teachers of the, of the master, and we published the, the, this executive summary of training and competence standards for the interventional pulmonology master program, inspired by also the American publication and uh, applied it to the <laughs> European uh, situation. And, uh, uh, and we published in detail uh, this model in this publication in Paminerva Medica uh, with uh, uh, the detail of, uh, of uh, teaching uh, and assessment for every uh, interventional pulmonology procedure. Uh, 
every, uh, for every procedure, we uh, described the knowledge of the diseases, the knowledge of the instruments, the, the skills uh, needed, uh, uh, the um, uh, theoretical, practical training, how to teach, uh, how to teach uh, for every procedure, and uh, very important, the quantitative and qualitative uh, assessment. And, uh, uh, and now uh, we are uh, uh, going uh, in a transition, we are to the uh, international uh, involvement of uh, uh, other international pulmonologists in this, uh, in this master. This is the 14th edition uh, that will begin uh, this, uh, this year in Florence, have you seen? Uh, what was the, uh, the threat to uh, uh, design uh, this, uh, uh, this document? Uh, we had to deny the, delineate the specific competencies, the core curriculum, uh, to describe the uh, methodologies, uh, the best methodologies, and the, uh, and the assessment. Uh, it's very important uh, uh, to uh, find the, the best uh, methodologies, and the, the technologies now help us uh, uh, with the informatics, uh, with the e-learning uh, platforms. Uh, this platform, for example, YouTube, uh, the, uh, the youth, normal YouTube, but uh, permit to have uh, the translation uh, of the uh, video lectures and uh, for every uh, session that we perform. And another is the, uh, the possibility uh, to, uh, to have the streaming, the live session, the stream of live session uh, with uh, uh, all the uh, procedures with the direction, uh, the director that changed the uh, different uh, uh, procedure that we use and uh, uh, comment with the online uh, distance uh, uh, with other uh, experts and with the participants of the master, all the procedures, the strategy, uh, the, uh, every, every procedure and uh, uh, and also uh, with the change from the CT scan to, uh, to, different, to different procedures. Uh, we use this and uh, uh, this permit not to have uh, many uh, participants, many doctors inside uh, that, uh, the bronchoscopy suite. Uh, the idea began <laughs> during the COVID, during the COVID when it was not possible for the participants to come inside the, the bronchoscopy suite. Uh, and there is also a, a very a, a big development of the uh, simulation-based training. We have a lot of uh, new simulators. Uh, the 3D simulators are uh, the future. Here are some uh, structures, some simulation for uh, rigid bronchoscopy. Uh, also, for uh, new procedures like, like, for example, radial radial EBUS, we have uh, uh, new virtual reality simulators, and uh, uh, every procedure now, like for example robotics, uh, need uh, a simulator to teach, uh, to teach uh, and uh, for the beginner, for the beginner to uh, go uh, then to the, to the patient. Uh, I, I uh, ask uh, the courtesy to Michael Pritchett uh, to show this uh, immersive virtual reality that uh, maybe will be the future of the uh, transmission from the uh, bron bronchoscopy suite uh, uh, all the resources uh, that, uh, that we have. Uh, we use uh, uh, virtual reality. In this case, for example, we, uh, this is the description of the mediastinal anatomy uh, through uh, the virtual reality system developed by uh, our, our university in Florence. Uh, on animals and cadaver, we can discuss uh, <laughs> some as pro and some as con but uh, uh, we used it uh, in, a, for example, we can use this model with the, the uh, animal uh, organ 
<coughs> but there are some uh, also the possibility to uh, use in some countries, in, in Italy, yes, in China, for example, <coughs> the, uh, also the pigs. Uh, in Italy, we have uh, a cadaver lab uh, that is very useful uh, for rigid bronchoscopy, for EBUS, because you can see the lymph node and uh, you can uh, have a, a sample that you can, um, uh, you, where you can do the rapid on site evaluation. And uh, so the, uh, is the lymphocyte, for example, you can see also the lymphocyte, uh, and uh, you can know if you are, uh, you have. Uh, take the right sample. Uh, in the, during the master, we use also uh, the uh, normal uh, person, but not for bronchoscopy, of course, but for, for example, for echocardiography. Uh, very important is the assessment, not only the quantification to tools, not only uh, the logbook with the, the numbers, uh, with numbers, but also the qualita qualification tools, uh, with the, especially with the DOPS, with the direct observation of procedural skills uh, developed, for example, from, from uh, by Henry Colt, the BSTAT, the BUSTAT, the OSAT that we use in our master. Uh, the new uh, one news is uh, uh, the uh, starting of this uh, Institute of Interventional Pulmonology by WABIP, maybe Stefano Gasparini, who is the president, will present <laughs> later. And that is a three, six months fellowship. And uh, uh, I hope uh, we will have the possibility to teach, uh, to train uh, directly in the uh, human, in the bronchoscopy uh, suite. And uh, uh, we'll start, it will start uh, uh, next month in uh, Turkey. And uh, I, I hope it uh, will be uh, a success. Uh, when we, we, we uh, uh, talk about the competence in, in uh, bronchoscopy, uh, it's uh, uh, useful also to, uh, mm, to uh, give uh, different levels because uh, it's different to, for the, the beginners, the intermediate, and, and the expert. And so it's very important to design different uh, characteristics of different, uh, different levels. Uh, very interesting, this project developed by Abip and, and uh, Tudor Toma, especially Tudor Toma, of uh, a, uh, a platform where you can uh, find uh, the uh, center where uh, to begin and to simulate, to have a simulation uh, um, course uh, in uh, different centers in uh, Europe, but uh, also, also in the world. Uh, I conclude uh, showing uh, where we are. Uh, we um, put together uh, the experts, uh, global experts uh, in, uh, in Venice uh, four years ago before the, before the COVID, the COVID uh, to uh, talk about uh, the master in interventional pulmonology. Uh, we stopped <laughs> for the COVID, but now we want to uh, start a restart. But uh, uh, the conclusion, uh, one of the conclusion of, the, of this conference was that uh, patients must not be used as subjects for medical procedure education in the future. And another consideration is that uh, for the moment, uh, we don't have a single common curriculum throughout Europe. Uh, nor is a certificate of competence in IP man mandatory in Europe, and maybe neither in a in India, and uh, there is a great need for a roadmap altogether uh, leading to standardization in uh, uh, interventional pulmonology. Thank you for your uh, attention. <laughs>